Good day, and welcome to another episode of Music is a Journey. Today, we are not going to be talking about any bands or albums. Instead, we're going to take a look at the history of the usage of the term heavy metal in the music press. So, let's cue the music. <laughs> Hi, I'm Peter Scove. I'm doing Music as a Journey. <laughs> okay, back in the 1980s, uh, say around 1983, that's when I started to become interested in music. And the music that really grabbed my attention was heavy metal. So from early on, from about the age of 11 or 12, I really became interested in heavy metal music and I was interested in grabbing anything I could. Which means I was there for the end of the new wave of British heavy metal. I was there for the whole glam hair metal movement, um, the beginning of the thrash metal movement, and also the beginnings of more extreme metal music as well. Also, I took a big interest in the roots of heavy metal, and I went back. By the time I was in junior high school and high school, I was tracing the roots back through the 70s into the 60s. So, a curious thing is how the term heavy metal came into being. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you can hear it in the Steppenwolf song, Born to be Wild. I like smoke and lightning, heavy metal thunder. That was back in 1968, and that's what kicked it off. Well, not exactly. So we're going to take a little bit of a look at the beginnings of the usage of heavy metal, and then we're going to take a look at some magazines from the 70s and see, uh, check out the frequency of the use of heavy metal. <laughs> In preparation for this video, I actually prepared a couple of video shorts last year, actually, almost a year ago. So let's just take a look at a couple of those. In the 1960s, there was no such thing as heavy metal music. Although the term heavy had been used to describe music of profound nature or something that was very deep, something that was very shocking, something that had great emotional impact, could be described as heavy. Metal, on the other hand, was not being used to describe music at all for a long time. And in fact, the terms heavy metal show up only on the periodic table of elements or in a book by William Burroughs in which he describes some characters as being heavy metal kids or uh, heavy metal people. When Steppenwolf released their famous song, Born to be Wild, in 1968, the use of the term heavy metal in the lyrics was not in reference to any kind of music, but rather a motorcycle engine. The terms metal and metallic had been used in reviews, though, as early as 1967 to describe types of music, how it sounded. There had been use of metal or metallic to describe the music of the Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, and some other bands. Iron Butterfly clued on to how heavy could be used to describe music, not only in the title of the debut album, Heavy, in 1968, but also in the name of the band, Iron being something very heavy and solid, and the Butterfly being something very light and graceful. There is a lot of debate about who coined the term heavy metal to describe a style of music. Sandy Perlman and Lester Bangs both lay claim to that they used the term first. Lester Bangs did actually use it in the way of saying heavy metal robot bands in one review that he did in 1970. However, the prize actually goes to a Mike Saunders who was writing an article for Cream Magazine, a review about Humble Pie's Safe As Yesterday Is album. Mike Saunders was a college student, writing reviews for extra money. He had recently been studying chemistry and the periodic table of the elements. As he sat down to review Humble Pie's album, he noticed the drumming was rather heavy and leaden and didn't have many fills. He remembered the periodic table and he thought of the terms heavy metal leaden to describe the drumming. And so he used those terms in his review of the album. Some time later, he was reviewing Sir Lord Baltimore's first album, 
kingdom come, and he decided to use the term again, saying that Sir Lord Baltimore had some of the best heavy metal tricks in the book. This was the beginning of the use of the term heavy metal to describe a style of music. The term heavy metal to describe a style of music didn't catch on right away though, and it wasn't until the initial wave of heavy metal had almost passed before it had become used regularly by music critics and been recognized by people in the music business as a particular style of music. In a 1976 interview with Robert Plant, Robert Plant refers to heavy metal as that boring period of music, and indeed the article itself says that heavy metal existed from 1969 to about 1971. In a later article by Lester Bangs, or review from 1977-78, he says that there was nothing of the sort of heavy metal after 1972, meaning that the initial wave of heavy metal music seems to have lasted for a very short time, roughly 1969 to 1971-1972. So if heavy metal supposedly died in the early 1970s, around 1971-72, then whatever happened to it? Well, an interesting thing is what happened with heavy metal during the 1970s, and this was a crucial time because the genre was undergoing a metamorphosis. At first, it was replaced by these more hard rock a and r type bands and also glam rock as well and for a while as the term started to catch on people weren't really sure what to do with it uh, exactly who was um, playing heavy metal and in 1974 heavy metal digest magazine began running and there's an issue which shows the cover and on the cover you can see that it says album reviews by aerosmith mott the hoople new york dolls the Stooges. So, yes, all of those bands were using the more distorted, aggressive guitar sound, but quite a variety of different styles amongst those four. In 1974, the Canadian rock band Bachman Turner Overdrive recorded a song called Not Fragile, which included the lyric, You asked if we play heavy music. The idea that music was heavy and that heavy metal was describing a certain style of music was beginning to really catch on, but still it wasn't showing up in the mainstream as much. In 1976, the Canadian power trio Triumph released their first album with a song called What's Another Day of Rock and Roll, which included the lyric, We've been five years working in a rock and roll band, blasting heavy metal across the land. So, by 1976, it seems heavy metal was being attached to this more heavier, aggressive form of music. And in fact, music journalist Martin Popoff often associates early albums by Queen or April Wine with the heavy metal sound of those early years, 1973, 1974, 75. But of course, it wasn't until the new wave of British heavy metal that the genre really started to come into its own, develop a recognisable style that could be applied to a particular sound. And even then, in the early 90s, you'll find a lot of bands were being called heavy metal, which we now call hard rock. But for sure, by 1983, heavy metal had become a household word, and from then on, the genre really began to expand and become something. All right, since making those videos, I've gone back and checked over some research and I have to point out that Lester Bangs himself, I didn't find any evidence that he ever laid claim that he was the one who coined the term. However, as I went back and checked again, he actually is one of the two proven contenders of the use of first use of the term. So we're going to take a look at a few different people here. And um, as mentioned in the videos, the terms heavy had already been in use during the 1960s. Songs that were about death, about war, about drug addiction, about crime, uh, mental illness, and so on. These were already heavy topics. And so the term heavy was already being applied to some of these um, songs with those kinds of lyrical themes. With the advent of the distortion pedal, people started looking for a description of the sound. And from about 1967 on, you can start to hear examples of the term metal 
being used to describe that kind of guitar sound. Now, my primary source for all the information of the early days of the usage of the term of heavy metal come from the research papers of one Dina Weinstein. Sure hope I got your name right, Dina, because she did a heck of a lot of research. And if you search on the internet, you can find an article called Just So Stories, How Heavy Metal Got Its Name, A Cautionary Tale. Dina Weinstein has done a heck of a lot of research into this, and she wrote a book about it too. And she did, in her book, cover how the music genre got its name. However, after completing the book, she got some other leads and went further into her research. Um, and that's where her paper, A Cautionary Tale, How Heavy Metal Got Its Name, A Cautionary Tale, comes up. She checked out old articles, and she actually sent off emails to people. And one of the emails she sent off was to the songwriter who wrote Steppenwolf's song, Born to be Wild. And, of course, if you listen to the lyrics, Heavy Metal Thunder does not refer to music at all. This is a story, this is a song, about driving a motorcycle or possibly a car through the desert, down a desert road, and that heavy metal thunder is coming from the engine of the vehicle. Now, this term actually shows up again, somewhat ironically, in 1975 in the Led Zeppelin song Trampled Underfoot from their double album Physical Graffiti. There is a line in the song that says, Check that heavy metal underneath your hood. Again, a kind of reference to the engine of a car. Why I say it's ironic is because by 1975, the term was already fairly commonly used, and Robert Plant had denied or preferred not to have Led Zeppelin included in the heavy metal movement of the early 70s. Anyway, that's an aside note. Another contender is Sandy Perlman, who was originally a music critic and later on became not only the manager of Blue Oyster Cult, but also a primary lyricist for the band. He claims to have used the term in an article um, in a review of an album back around 68-69, um, and that article was apparently available on the internet. I did follow Dina Weinstein's um, lead, but I could not find it. But she claims to have read it at the time of researching for her paper, and there is no mention of heavy metal in that article at all. We do hear it coming up in a reference to um, a Jimi Hendrix album, where someone says it's like listening to heavy metal falling from the sky, but there it's being used more as a derogatory term, a criticism of the sound of the album. So we can't really go with that one. There are other instances. For example, there was a group that referred to themselves as the Heavy Metal Kids, um, but this is more in reference to William S. Burroughs' book. So the term was out there, and the two instances where the term is actually being used to describe or refer to a style of music or a musical approach as opposed to a description of the sound one of them is Lester Bangs. In a review, he wrote for the Guess Who's album, Canned Wheat. In the review, he states that they are better than a lot of the heavy metal robots out there today. Of course, the description could be just an image that there are other bands out there just playing heavy music, but in a robotic kind of way. Nobody is striking out with any originality. And the Guess Who, coming from Winnipeg in Canada, they did have a, an approach to their music that was different from American or British music. So that could be the inspiration for that. However, it can also be understood that Heavy Metal Robots is a reference to the fact that in 1969 there were a lot of bands who were jumping on the bandwagon, so to speak, getting into playing that more heavy, aggressive guitar rock. At the time, it was still not called heavy metal, but the suggestion that they are heavy in sound and in th lyrical thematics, in uh, metal, in the sound of the guitars, could then put uh, an image to the sound, that to the style of music, that they are heavy metal. Now, it was actually Mike Saunders, as mentioned in the video, who described the, uh, who criticized um, Humble Pie's albums for being, um, uh, leaden heavy metal shit rock or something in that order and in the end he just went with the term heavy metal because it had cropped up um, as a college student in his studies with the periodic table. Okay, so now we've got the term heavy metal in usage in a review of a Humble Pie album in 1970 and again we find he used the term um, as he stated in his email 
exchange with Dina Weinstein that he basically plagiarized himself, to use the term again, in a description of Sir Lord Baltimore's uh, Kingdom Come album, which uh, in which he stated that the band had the best heavy metal licks in the book. Now, of course, this is one music critic using the term, and of course, there's Lester Bangs using the term. And what we don't see is that the term suddenly starts being used a lot. In fact, Ms. Weinstein points out in her um, article on the internet that originally it was believed Lester Bangs coined the term in 1972 in a review of a Black Sabbath concert, and she actually researched that checking out the original copy of the magazine. Actually, it was spread over two issues. There was no instance of the term heavy metal being used at all. And this was in 1972 by a man who had already used the term previously. So it seems that even by 1972, people weren't exactly jumping on to use this term and say, that's what we're going to call this type of music. It seems to have been more in hindsight. So, <clears throat> one thing that I did, being a big fan of heavy metal and being very interested in the history behind the music, I went ahead and ordered some old magazines from eBay uh, just to check things out. So, we're going to take a look at those magazines now, and we're, I've read through pretty much everything in them that could pertain to heavy metal, and I'll tell you what I found. The oldest issue I have here is the January 1973 issue of Hit Parader. And I ordered this, well, first of all, because January 73, that's pretty early on, but still the term should have been in use already for a little while. And this particular issue includes Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, something about The Who, and of course Alice Cooper here on the cover. So. I read through this magazine basically cover to cover, even reading album reviews, letters from the readers, and here's what I found. In the Black Sabbath article, which is basically an interview with Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy says, I used to like anything that was really heavy. Geezer is into heavier things like the mothers. And later on he says, some people call us downer rock. That's it for that whole article about Black Sabbath. There is reference to heavy music twice and downer rock once, but never are the words heavy metal used together. In fact, the term metal doesn't appear at all in any description of the music. Let's move on to the Led Zeppelin article and see, because as I understand, Led Zeppelin in the United States is often considered the first heavy metal band. Let's take a look. Led Zeppelin is described as the definitive all-electric band. There is no other mention of heavy music, heavy rock, heavy metal, or metal at all. So, so far from 1973, January 73, we can't find any mention of the use of heavy metal for two of the big three early metal bands. We do have an interview with Steve Marriott of Humble Pie, the band that was first referred to as heavy metal music, or <laughs> lead and heavy metal lead and shit rock or something like that. What does Steve Marriott have to say? Steve Marriott says, we get slagged sometimes for being too heavy. That's it. Again, heavy. We're seeing heavy coming up a few times now, but still no heavy metal. There is one other point of interest in the magazine, and this is an advertisement for a distortion pedal. The Big Muff advert says, it kicks a whole bunch of ass. So we can see at least in 1973, the term kick ass was being used. That's interesting. All right, let's move on to the next magazine. Next up, we have the November 1973 issue of Circus Magazine. I ordered this one because it features Uriah Heep, also Jethro Tull, another article about Led Zeppelin, and uh, Mark Farner, Color Calendar. Of course, Mark Farner being the frontman for Grand Funk Railroad, one of the first bands to be called heavy metal. So let's take a look at what's inside. 
The article about Uriah Heep is actually about the release of their new album, Sweet Freedom, which was a step away from their fantasy-themed heavy rock of the previous albums. Uh, the article mentions that it's a change from fantasy and uh, to songs about dreams, freedom, ladies, peace of mind, and male groupies. Uh, the music is described as having crashing chords, and Sweet Freedom is the delicate art of combining the heavy riff and lyrical profundity. Well, again, heavy riff, crashing chords, but still nothing about heavy metal. And this is now November 1973. Let's move on. There is an article about a fellow, John Speedy Can, and he makes one mention here, they were caught up in the era of hard rock. Okay, so the era of hard rock is addressed. Still nothing about heavy metal, but that could also be simply because their style of music was more hard than heavy. Okay, moving on. There is an article called How to Be a Roadie, and Deep Purple are discussed in one part. However, there are no adjectives used to describe the music. In the back pages, we find uh, short pieces about Led Zeppelin, Grand Funk Railroad, The Who, Iggy Pop, and Jethro Tull. However, none of those mention heavy rock, heavy music, heavy metal either. Finally, there's a short article about Jethro Tull. It says that their album, A Passion Play, was totally panned by the critics. However, it is number one in the charts, and over one million fans in the U.S. saw their show. However, there is no mention of heavy metal, hard rock, heavy music, or even progressive rock in that article. So, two magazines from 1973, the term heavy metal is not used at all, even for bands like Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Uriah Heep, Alice Cooper. Nothing mentioned there about heavy metal. Okay, one reason for this could be that by 1973, simply the term had not come into fashion. Another possibility is that because the, the people who started the, using the term were people like Lester Bangs, Mike Saunders, and according to himself, Sandy Perlman, um, these people are not the ones writing the articles in these magazines. So it's possible simply that the writers had not caught on to the term or were just not in the habit of using that term and that the terms heavy rock or just heavy were still common, but heavy metal was not. An interesting point to mention about Sandy Perlman, who was the lyricist for Blue Oyster Cult, in one Blue Oyster Cult song about bomber airplanes in World War II, there is the lyric, like some heavy metal fruit. This is kind of interesting because the song was written by Sandy Perlman, I believe, and the term heavy metal does appear. However, it is actually talking about bombs, heavy metal fruit. What kind of special seed are they delivering, right? Okay, let's move on to 1974. My one and only 1974 issue is a circus magazine from April. Uh, this features, can you see that? Deep Purple, Rise from the Ashes with Burn. So this article is all about Deep Purple's new album, Burn, which of course is the album that featured David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes after Ian Gillen and Roger Glover were out of the band. Concert Guide, Uriah Heep, Mott the Hoople, we have Robert Plant speaks out about stardom, religion, and fans. Alice Cooper is in here, retires from rock career, okay. And uh, a few other things are mentioned in here as well. And the article that is probably most interesting is the Rock and Roll Sex Index Part 3, Words They Never Taught in School. We'll take a look at that. But first, let's go into the magazine from the beginning. Regarding Deep Purple's Burn album, there is no description of the sound of the music. There is an interesting comment, though, about David Coverdale. Will unknown David Coverdale be a hit for the band? I find that an interesting thing, because at the time, he really wasn't unknown. He'd had a little bit of recording experience and playing experience with some other bands. Um, however, he had never played in any big-time band, and so there was a lot of question, why did Deep Purple hire someone with such little experience and someone who was so unknown? And of course, now David Coverdale is uh, a big star in hard rock and also heavy metal music, too. 
interesting though and that's actually one of the fun things about looking back at these old magazines is you can find articles just introducing something or speculating about something which of course now some 40 years later we already know all about and there are also some small stories like Steven Tyler of Aerosmith getting his lip bashed on Joe Perry's guitar and having to uh, go off stage and come back with a blood-soaked shirt to finish the show or Alice Cooper stepping on top of a stage prop that wasn't securely fastened and falling off 17 feet down off stage uh, finishing the show and then going off to the hospital with a mild concussion or something like this anyway let's take a look further on on page 41 there is an article about Queen and it talks about the new release Queen 2 and it does say that there are Sabbath heavy rockers and soft yes type ballads. So we have the term heavy rock or heavy rocker in here being used for Queen. And if you've ever heard Queen 2, uh, it's an uh, apt moniker because a lot of the music on Queen 2 is really quite heavy for the day. On page 42, there's an article about Hawkwind uh, with Lemmy on bass and vocals. No description of how the music sounds. We have the top 20 albums on page 52, a short article about Grand Funk, their album Shine On, but no mention of heavy metal. On page 58, there is a short write-up about a Deep Purple concert where John Lord observes a fan banging his head against the stage. So here we have an instance of head banging in a heavy rock concert from the early 70s. On page 59, a short article about Uriah Heep states, they are one of the most powerful forces in heavy rock. So here we are, April 1974, the term heavy rock continues to come up in music magazines, still no mention of heavy metal. There's a Black Sabbath review on page 60, there is a Robert Plant interview, no mention of heavy metal in any of these either. However, let's take a look at the Rock and Roll Sex Index, Part 3, Words They Never Taught in School. On page 45, one of the terms listed is heavy metal, and it says, Heavy metal applies to the favorite music of the hardest rockers, chiefly in urban centers like Detroit and Cleveland, guys who like to ball to the rhythm of the pile drivers and jackhammers. The power of the music usually thrusts in strong, raw guitar chops that really work up the adrenaline and command the human body to be bold. There we go. 1974 magazine giving us a definition of heavy metal music um, with sexual references. <laughs> Let's move on to the next magazine. So here we are in July 1975, and this is Cream Magazine. Now one of the reasons why Cream Magazine is significant is because the editor of Cream Magazine was Lester Bangs. I couldn't actually find where it says in here that he is the editor, but in the letters section where people make some mention of Lester Bangs, there is a note from the editor with a reply to that comment, which sounds like it is Lester Banks himself replying to the comment. For example, I was something something. Okay, but here, let's take a look. So July 1975, this is where it starts to get interesting. Right away on page 8 in the letter section, there is a letter called Metal Manifesto. The letter reads, After quite a few months of reading Cream, I must say that you have added to the problem. The problem, finding the ultimate in heavy metal without buying a lot of junk in the process. Aside from maybe Iggy, the groups you write about all the time are pretty poor to fare. Your biggest wazoo I've read so far was the one about Can in your letter from Britain, January 75. Their industrialized violence had an IAR, initial adrenaline response, of minus five on a scale of one to ten. Heavy as helium. Personally, I like Black Sabbath. So what if it's hard to tell the difference between the songs? At least it's better than having horns, assuaging weirdness, excessive vocals, etc. wrecking the song. Can't you just tell us how raunchy it is and screw how good it is? 
Okay, so 1975, we already have at least one person out there hunting for music that is heavy. Doesn't matter if you can't tell the difference between the songs, it's just supposed to be raunchy. Doesn't have to be good. Interesting point. And that brings up a quote of Lester Bangs. One time, he quoted that the appeal of heavy metal music to heavy metal fans was in the distortion. Alright, moving on from page 8. What else do we have? There is on page 16 an article about Richie Blackmore having left Deep Purple and making a new band, Rainbow, with the members of Elf. On page 31, there is a remark about Steve Marriott. Apparently he says he is a professional army sergeant moonlighting as a heavy metal Aretha Franklin. On page 37, we have an article about Grand Funk Railroad and a bit of a description about how the band began. On page 37, it says about the first manager and basically founder of Grand Funk Railroad, Terry Knight. So he decided to push the last dregs of psychedelia down the drain by popularizing a new craze, heavy metal music, played by none other than his Grand Funk Railroad. Enter the Downer Dinosaurs. There's more on other pages in this magazine. An article about Queen on pages 45 and 46, continued on page 70. Uh, this is an article about Queen's performance at Chicago's Aragon Ballroom. Uh, for their new album, Sheer Heart Attack, there is a quote. On page 70, it says, There's plenty of heavy metal, enough to satisfy any boogeyman. On page 64, there's also an article about Bad Company and their album Straight Shooter. And in the text, again, we find heavy metal showing up a couple of times. In the article, it's written, they have a love of heavy metal and enjoy themselves. Later in the article, it says, the rock marketplace was all mouth, eager to drink of this heavy metal music as if it were a tonic. Further on, it says, the ability to straddle both the AM and FM markets with their heavy metal singles. That's three times in one article about Bad Company that the term heavy metal comes up. What a change from the previous uh, magazines from 73 and 74. Curiously, in an article about Kiss, it actually doesn't mention heavy metal or heavy music at all, but instead likens Kiss to a punk rock band, saying that they are the definition of punk. Hmm. Quite a bit different from our perspective of the band today. We have one more magazine to take a look at. This is Circus Raves, and this is from October 1975. I bought this one. Well, of course, here's Ozzy Osbourne, so there's an article about Black Sabbath and Sabotage. There is also Yes, which is, of course, not heavy metal, but I like Yes. Uh, BTO, Backman Turner Overdrive, uh, Led Zeppelin, Alice Cooper. So there should be some reasons to mention heavy metal in here. So let's take a look. There is an advertisement for the new Rainbow album. Then, in the article about uh, Black Sabbath sabotage, they are called the High Priests of Mental. After that, the term heavy metal shows up several times in the article where the description of the band's history is discussed. I'm now going to read a section that talks about the basis of Black Sabbath's music. Sabbath are a natural outgrowth, picking up on cream riffs, but disdaining excessive virtuoso soloing for reliance on the power chord structure. More than Zeppelin or Purple or Quo, they geared their sound and their message to the demands of the then-emergent post-60s generation, an age group more introspective, emotionally depressed, and sophisticated than the 60s rockers. Those weaned on Beatles and Stones could only find in Sabbath music tedium ad infinum, and their image a total lack of friendly bravado or revolutionary ardour. But for the younger set, Sabbath generated an excitement and a dark manic truth. They maintained a strong group identity, shrugging off attempts to push Ozzy, for example, before the other members, and a sound more monolithic than any rock and roll that preceded it a sound forged to a brittle, metallic roar. The sound corresponded to the visions of hell, heaven, and 1984 the lyrics evoked. Sabbath haven't 
as some think, stood still as a musical force. Although they have been viewed as the best of the crass, heavy metal, kitsch rock exponents, and their musical growth hasn't been as spectacular or surrounded in potential greatness as Zeppelin's, it is revealing a surprising development as the metal rusts away. Sabbath have the skills to build a wider structure of music on their solid foundation and to appeal to an audience beyond their third generation crowd. If, in fact, the heavy metal audience is shrinking, in Sabotage, the Birmingham Boys have an album of sufficient intricacy and internal dynamics to extend beyond the limits of heavy metal acceptance. Those are some rather glowing words for the description of Black Sabbath, and clearly it seems that Black Sabbath are being hailed as the leaders of heavy metal music, in this article anyway from 1975. On page 14, one little article that caught my attention is about Randy Bachman's new record label and the first group he signed is Trooper, a band that basically come from my hometown of Surrey, or actually the Surrey White Rock area uh, near Vancouver. And their music is described as raunchy, hard rock, loud and noisy, a chaotic brand of rock and roll. Yes, their first album did feature a little bit more of an aggressive hard rock approach, but they always stuck with melody, and basically, uh, album after album, the hard rock was pulled away, and the melodic or fun rock became more prominent. Maybe you all know the song, Raise a little hell, raise a little hell, raise a little hell. Yeah, that was later on down the road from their fourth album. One band I don't know very much about is The Tubes. And because I don't know about them, I decided to read the article, and I was surprised to find some references to heavy metal in there as well. In the text, it says, The tubes are the first hardcore heavy metal hybrid to hit rock and roll. That's all I could find in this magazine, actually, with references to heavy metal. However, curious is the top 20 listed here on page 54. Number one, Led Zeppelin, Physical Graffiti. Number two, Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare. Number three, Kiss, Dressed to Kill. Four, Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic. Five, Queen, Sheer Heart Attack. Six, Bad Company, Straight Shooter. Seven, Kiss, Hotter Than Hell. Eight is David Bowie. Nine is Elton John. Ten, Kiss, The Debut. Eleven, uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive, Four Wheel Drive. Uh, number twelve, Queen Two. We have David Bowie at 13, Black Sabbath, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath at 14, and uh, Bad Company with their debut, Bad Company at 18, Grand Funk Railroad, All the Girls in the World at 19. So what we can see is that circus readers in 1975, a lot of people really liked heavy rock, hard rock, heavy metal. All right, and that's all I have from these early 70s magazines, but we can see that in 73, no mention of heavy metal, 74, only one mention of it, and then by 75, it starts just popping up everywhere. Now, one of the reasons why I was interested in checking all this out is I sometimes watch the YouTube channel No Life Till Metal with Scott Waters, and he often likes to point out that in the 1970s there was heavy metal, in spite of the fact that a lot of people say that there was no metal in the 70s except for maybe Black Sabbath and Judas Priest. And as he points out is that what was called heavy metal at the time is different from what we call heavy metal now. And I say that's just because the music genre, um, it grew, it evolved, and people were still trying to figure out exactly what should be called heavy metal, and year by year, that was changing. Now, uh, what actually kicked all this old magazine purchasing off was this issue here of Cream in October 1979 with the article, Is Heavy Metal Dead? And that is going to be the topic of another video. So for now, I hope I enlightened you a little bit on how heavy metal was being used to describe a style of music in the early 1970s. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back again with more discussions of music and introducing more albums and bands. All right, catch you next time.